हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक दिस इज अ क्रैश कोर्स सीरीज एंड इट इज अज्यूम दैट दैट स्टूडेंट हैज अंडरगोन वेरियस डिटेल्स ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट एंड इट इज जस्ट द क्विक रिविजन ऑफ द फैक्ट्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद अ पब्लिक हेल्थ डेंटिस्ट्री एपिडोमोलॉजी एपिडोमोलॉजी इज द स्टडी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डेटामिनेंस एंड द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ द डिजीज एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन इन प्रिवेंशन एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ द डिजीज नाउ स्टडी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इंक्लूड्स अ डिजीज that occurs in a time place and person now the place can be example of a spot map the study of determinants that means what is causing the disease and the frequency study is incidence or the prevalence of the disease now the type of place distribution is the this image is of spot map so it is first used effectively by john snow and therefore john snow is known as the father of epidemiologist and it is used for disease cholera and hence cholera is known as the father of public health now father of medicine is hippocrates and he is also known as the first true epidemiologist so the component of epidemiology is the disease distribution determinants of the disease and the disease frequency now talking about the time distribution of the disease it can be either short term long term or the periodic fluctuation that means disease occurring in a period of time so short term fluctuation means a disease that is occurring for a short duration of time it is also known as epidemics so epidemics is the occurrence of a disease in a community or in a region of cases of an illness which is excess than the normal so short term fluctuation can be food poisoning or it can be bhopal gas tragedy since this tragedy was occurring at very short duration of time so long term fluctuation is when the diseases occurs at a long duration of time and secular trends are the trends that occurrence of disease over a period of time now how disease is occurring a period of time if this is a graph this is taken for the time duration so it is depicted via a line graph so secular trends are the trends of the occurrence of a disease over a long period of time several years or decades periodic fluctuation means disease is occurring at certain period so seasonal trends are the disease occurring at a particular season cyclic trends are fluctuation that occurs every few years now influenza shows the maximum change in trend that is due to the antigenic shift or antigenic drift so antigenic shift is due to the genetic reassortment or due to genetic rearrangement and antigenic drift is due to the point source mutation so coming to endemic certain definitions endemic is a constant presence of a disease or any infectious agent which occurs in a geographical area or which occurs in a population without any importation from outside pandemic affects a large population that is occurring in a large geographical area it can involve entire nation or continent or worldwide disease now covid 19 is again example of the pandemic herd community it prevents the individual from spreading the disease from a non immunized individual uh, in the population so as a result of an acquired immunity developing in the other people now coming to the classification of epidemiological study we have observation or experiment now the study which is observed via the observation is the observational study it can be further classified into descriptive study in which you are going to describe a study so this is basically a hypothesis formulation analytical study is when you are analyzing the disease pattern or analyzing the study so it is hypothesis testing so analytical study can be cohort study case control study 
क्रॉस सेक्शनल स्टडी और इकोलॉजिकल स्टडी देन वी हैव एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टडी इन दैट वी इंटरवें वी डू इंटरवेंशनल सो इट इज हाइपोथिस कंफर्मेशन either you can do randomized control trial clinical trial field trials or the community trial now talking about the differences between cohort and case control study so cohort study see as the name suggest o and we have o in the little for in the letter forward so it is basically a forward study in which we are going to go from cause to effect case control study if you write backward so it contains the letter a second letter is a in the case control also we have second letter a so case control study is going backward in the time that means already the disease has occurred now we are finding cause for the disease so cohort study is also known as forward looking study case control study is also known as backward looking study in case of cohort study we go from exposure to the outcome of the disease so it is also known as exposure to outcome study case control study we go from the outcome that means disease has occurred and then we find the exposure or the cause of the disease so cohort study is also known as cause to effect study also known as risk factor to the disease study case control study we are going backward in time so effect to cause study or disease has already occurred and then we are finding the risk factor so disease to risk factor study cohort study is also known as forward looking study so o cohort cohort o we have and case control a we have so cohort study is also known as forward looking study case control study is also known as the backward looking study since we are going forward in time for cohort study therefore cohort cohort study is also known as prospective study case control study we are going back in time so that is why it is also known as retrospective study then we find the new cases so as we proceed forward in time we find more number of new cases therefore the cohort study is also known as incidence study and since we are following up the disease cases so it is also known as the follow up study while on the other hand case control study we are going to refer the cases disease which has already been occurred so this is a case reference study also cohort if you reverse the cohort so it becomes troco tro hoc study so the backward study of the cohort is the case control that is why it is also known as tro hoc study now cohort study is used for acute diseases and case control study is used for rare diseases so minimum two groups are required to do a very good cohort study and for case control study also we require at least two groups so but also ideal cases to control in case of a case control study is 1 is to 4 to one case we take four control so talking about strength of association for a cohort study will be studying about three uh, strength of association three risk the relative risk attributable risk and population attributable risk so relative risk is the most important indicator in studying the strength of association so relative risk measures the strength of association between the suspected cause and effect so relative risk is determined by incidence of exposed divided by incidence of known exposed that means all the people having disease divided by all the people having non disease so this is known as relative risk and it tells about the risk of having disease in an individual so relative risk is calculated with uh, by the clinician now talking about attributable risk it is calculated by formula incidence of exposed minus incidence of known exposed divided by incidence of exposed in 200 so difference in the incidence of rates of a disease between exposed and non exposed is calculated with the help of attributable risk difference in the incidence of rate of disease between the exposed and non exposed so attributable risk is also known as excess risk absolute risk or risk difference and attributable risk is used by epidemiologist now next definition is of 
population attributable risk so there are three strength of association in the cohort study the relative risk attributable risk and the population attributable risk so population attributable risk is talking about the population that means incidence of total minus incidence of known exposed divided by incidence of total that means if we remove the risk factor then there will be reduction in the disease so for example if we ban smoking then how much reduction in the lung cancer is observed so that is the population attributable risk in 200 now it is used by the public health program manager so strength of association for the cohort study relative risk which is incidence of exposed divided by incidence of non exposed then we have studied about the attributable risk and the population attributable risk now strength of association for a case control study is determined by the odds ratio so if you or uh, make a table between disease and non disease risk factor and non risk factor so people having disease with a risk factor is a people not having disease but still having risk factor for example people not having lung cancer but smokers will be b people having disease but non smoker so people having lung cancer but they are non smoker that means risk factor is absent but the disease is present so they are c and the people who does not have disease and does not smoke so this is going to be d non disease non risk factor so odds ratio can be derived by a into d divided by b into c so a into b divided by b a into d divided by b into c so odds ratio measures the strength of association between the exposure and the disease interpretation for the odds ratio if it comes one that means numerator is equal to denominator so there is no association present if it is more than one that means a positive association is present between the risk factor and the disease so if this value comes more than one that means the lung cancer is caused by smoking if it comes less than 1 that means a negative association is present for example we can say between the fluoride and caries activity so people having fluoride intake will have less caries activity so that is a negative association means it is beneficial association which is present if you see some mixed study designs then we have a retrospective cohort study retrospective means cohort study we know going forward in time but we are talking about retrospective so for we start from present we go back in time take the medical records and then start doing study so that is a retrospective cohort study mixed cohort study is retrospective cohort study going back in time then taking the study forward and then continuing this study forward by some other clinician say so that is a combination of retrospective cohort study plus prospective cohort study is known as a mixed cohort study nested case control is we start from the present time we fo uh, go forward in time so for example uh, having medical records of the child who are newly born and we go forward in time now some rare disease come we start checking the medical records so this is known as a nested case control study so nested case control study majorly have a forward direction right it is also a type of a cohort study because of the prospective nature or temporality so nested case control study is also a type of cohort study these were the longitudinal study so if you say non longitudinal study or vertical studies these are the studies that are done at a point of time now it can be a cross sectional study or a ecological study so cross sectional studies again done at a point of time in cross sectional study we take the primary data that means data that is taken primary from individual from questionnaire from interviews or ecological study we take secondary data that means we are taking data from the medical records of hospital so that will be a secondary data that is taken so cross sectional study is also known as prevalence study because at point of time whoever individual are diseased we are taking so it is 
both incidence of new cases plus old cases so that is why total incidence of people having disease is known as prevalence and therefore in cross sectional study at this point of time all the individual who are disease we take these individual and that is why the cross sectional study is also known as prevalence study now cohort study is known as the incidence study while on the other hand cross sectional study is the prevalence study since we are studying at a point of time therefore it is also known as snapshot study ecological study we are taking the data for example we are taking blood records uh, whoever are diabetic or we are we are taking nutritional deficiency uh, say anemia people suffering from anemia so we take hemoglobin count from the labs so the, this is the secondary data that is taken from lab investigation via the hospitals and that is why it is done in nutritional surveys or some correlational studies so cross sectional study is used to calculate the magnitude of the disease in a population if you calculate all the studies the best study design is the cohort study then we have because relative risk is a best measure as compared to the odds ratio so cohort study is better than case control study is better than cross sectional study is better than ecological study now cross sectional and ecological are vertical studies or non longitudinal studies cohort and case control are longitudinal studies so cohort study is the forward study case control is the backward study and cohort study is better than the case control study hence relative risk is better than the odds ratio so unit for measurement of case control cohort and cross sectional study is individual we take samples on individual while on the other hand ecological study is done on a population and we see ecological fallacy in ecological study incidence is best measured by the cohort study confounding factors are the other factors that are associated with exposure and outcome and they are distributed unequally between the study and the control group so we have taken for lung cancer smoking factor we have taken that is the risk factor but other factors like age sex all these factors that are associated with the exposure and the outcome but they are distributed unequally are known as confounding factors and if we do not pay attention on these factor we can get the confounding bias so how can you remove it via matching you can match the control and uh, study group via randomization restriction stratification statistical modeling stratified randomization so stratified randomization is the best way second best is the randomization technique and matching is the most commonly used technique now systematical error is bias bias can be a subject bias if the bias is between the subject subject is uh, not able to recall that will be known as the recall bias so there are three type of bias subject bias interviewer bias and analyzer bias so subject bias bias is when the bias is related to a subject say suppose for a case control study you have given a question where or interview so in that case if the patient is not able to recall history then that will be known as a recall bias hawthorn bias is when the subject change its behavior during the study say in case of a cohort study when you started with a smoker and you check after 10 years the risk of developing disease now in between the study patient quit smoking and patient doesn't inform that uh, he or she has quit smoking so that will be a hawthorn bias that means the pa- the subject is changing its behavior during the course of the study apprehension bias is due to apprehension there are biological parameters changes like heart rate bp all these are the apprehension bias investigator biases when bias occur due to investigator who is investigating the study pigmalion biases say suppose if uh, the increase in the motivation by the teacher increases the marks of a student so if you are doing a study on marks of students of particular of of particular colleges or schools then a good teacher is introduced in the college so in that case suddenly the marks will increase 
so that is that will be a pygmalion bias interviewer bias is bias which occurs due to interviewer that means interviewer is asking simple questions or easy questions or favorite questions from selected student selection bias is while selecting the cases and control you are going to make a bias misclassification is when you are making a bias during the classification burkesonian bias is different rates of admission to the different hospitals for different diseases so different admission rate to the hospital for di different diseases for example you are studying a particular disease and uh, in say suppose you are studying a particular disease in delhi so you are studying labor in delhi so in that case there will be few hospitals where you see only complicated cases occurring so that will be a burkesonian bias analyzer bias is when bias occur due to analyzer so to protect that we do the blinding so single blinding is when there is only subject is blinded subject is unaware that he is a control or a case double blinding is when you are blinding the subject as well as investigator so subject also doesn't know if he is a case or control interviewer also doesn't know who are cases who are control triple blinding is when subject plus investigator plus analyzer all of them doesn't know who's who are cases who are control so triple blinding is the best way to overcome bias and double blinding is the most commonly seen way of the blinding technique now coming to the randomization control trial so first of all when you are doing a, a randomized control trial rct you select the patient say suppose you take 200 patients the first thing you do is you select the patient and you classify them into experimental group and the reference group so classification of the individuals occur at stage 2 so experimental group and reference group and if you have not done randomization then there can be selection bias so selection bias occur after the first stage then you are going to give x drug to the experimental group and you are going to give placebo or any other drug to the reference group or multivitamin or anything and either you can give x drug that means new drug to the experimental group and the older drug to the reference group and then you compare the results so the heart of rct is randomization remember the heart of rct is randomization because it eliminates the selection bias so the best study design is meta analysis it is a combination of all the analysis so earlier people have done cohort studies so you take all the cohort study and you uh, study all these studies you mix all these studies and make one more new study from pre existing studies so that will be a meta analysis it is studies of study analysis of analysis then it is so meta analysis is better than randomized control trial is better than cohort study is better than case control study is better than cross sectional study is better than ecological study is better than animal research is better than in vitro study or test tube studies so this is the sequence efficacy of the drug is ability to produce any desired benefit effects during any ideal circumstances so in ideal circumstances how the drug is beneficial is known as efficacy of the drug effectiveness is ability to produce the desired beneficial effect in the actual use or in the working condition so coming to the clinical trials the first we have is the preclinical trial which is done on animals talking about clinical trials done in the humans so phase 0 is done on the healthy human volunteer phase 0 we do the micro dosing so we give small amount of dose phase 0 is micro dosing phase 1 is also done on healthy human volunteers and we check the safety and non toxicity of the drug so in case of phase 1 it tells about the maximum tolerated dose how much of the dose a human can tolerate so it tells about the safety and non toxicity of the drug phase 2 is done on the patients 
so we check the efficacy of the drug so efficacy is the ability to produce the desired beneficial effect so if you are launching a new drug in the market first you give the drug in very small amount of dose micro dosing then you check for the safety and non toxicity then you check the efficacy how much the drug is beneficial phase 3 is also done on patients now you compare this new drug with the existing drug if it is better than the drugs that are already available in the market so you do the randomized control trial in phase 3 so phase 3 is randomized control trial phase 2 is it tells about the maximum it is the maximum failure so most of the drug shows maximum failure during this phase 2 now after the phase 3 if the drug is better than the existing drug you launch this drug in the market after that it there comes phase 4 so phase 4 is when the drug is released in the market it is given on patient and we check for rare and long term side effects or complication of the drug so phase 4 is the longest phase of a clinical trial asked in the question the longest phase of clinical trial is phase 4 and it is done for 2 to 10 to 25 years so post marketing surveillance is done during phase 4 association can be spurious association that means a false association then indirect association can be example can be uh, in high altitude there are increases incidence of goiter and that is because of the iodine deficiency so that is present in the soil so that is a indirect association so high altitude causes goiter that will be a indirect association direct or causal association is either one to one association one to one causal association or multifactorial association now tools of measurement in epidemiology are rate ratio proportion so tools of measurements are rate so rates is when numerator is a part of denominator and the multiplier is it can be 1000 it can be any multiple of 1000 not 100 so incidence rate is a incidence incidence is number of new cases divided by total cases total population into 1000 so incidence is new cases divided by total population into 1000 and rate is a incidence so numerator new cases are a part of total population so numerator is a part of or is a multiplier of denominator into we have 1000 that is a rate ratio is when numerator is not a part of denominator for example if i say sex ratio so in that female divided by males in 2000 that means the sex ratio in india is 943 so if i say 943 females they are present per 1000 males so this is not a part of denominator that will be a ratio proportion is again one more example can be maternal mortality rate so that is maternal mortality rate is the maternal death divided by live births so here maternal death are the mothers who die live birth are the children who survive into 1 lakh so this ratio mmr ratio for india is 119 so that is a ratio when numerator is not a part of denominator it is a ratio when numerator is a part of denominator it becomes rate now proportion is when numerator is a part of denominator like a ratio like a rate so in the rate numerator is a part of denominator into 100 so proportion always comes in percentage because multiplier in proportion is 100 so prevalence if you see prevalence is total number of cases divided by total population into 100 so prevalence is a proportion incidence is a rate so incidence is when numerator is a part of denominator into either it can be 1000 1 lakh 10000 proportion is when numerator is a part of denominator multiplier is 100 so it comes in percentage so prevalence is a proportion incidence is a rate 
सो इफ यू इफ आई से चाइल्ड केस फर्टेलिटी रेशो सो दैट विल बी नंबर ऑफ डेथ्स डिवाइडेड बाय केसेस इन टू हंड्रेड सो द केसेस डेथ अकर फ्रॉम द केसेस so from the disease so we are taking numerator as a part of denominator that will be proportion proportion is a prevalence rate is incidence then ratio is when numerator is not a part of denominator so rate measures the occurrence of some particular event so particular of a disease or occurrence of the death in a population which is in a given period of time so incidence is a rate so uh, you use incidence to control a disease or for research into the etiology or pathogenesis of a disease or to know the efficacy of prevention and therapeutic measures prevalence is a proportion it helps to estimate the magnitude of the health or disease problems in a community also the prevalence tells us it identify uh, the potential high risk population because it tells about the disease out of population and it is it is useful in administrative and planning purposes so if you see prevalence prevalence is equal to incidence into duration so if you increase the duration of a disease you are going to increase the prevalence so diseases like tuberculosis having higher duration so there will be higher prevalence rate for that prevalence is a ratio again so incidence is higher for acute conditions incidence is higher for acute conditions also we have studied in the cohort study it is used for acute diseases and case control is used for rare diseases so incidence is used for less duration of diseases so it is acute it is used for the acute diseases while increasing the duration increases the prevalence of the disease that means prevalence is used for chronic diseases having longer duration